Hey guys, my name is Ali and I'm a data analytics manager working in Oslo, Norway. In this video, I'm going to share five easy to explain dashboard concepts that you can use for your data analytics portfolio. My goal is that by the end of this video, you will be able to implement these concepts into your data analytics portfolio. If you bring your data analytics portfolio to an interview, then you should be able to talk about them. Or if you are a data analyst who just want to learn some new concepts, then that's also totally fine. The first concept we are going to talk about is who is this for? The second concept is dashboard, not reports. The third concept is stick to the basics. The fourth concept is colors with purpose. And the fifth and final one is that consistency is key. So the first concept is who is it for? And this is before and I'm going to show you guys an after after I made some changes to it. And this concept really comes down to making sure that the dashboards that you create have a focus. So imagine that if sales came to you and you made uh, some of it for sales and then someone from order or another department said that we also want units sold. We also want some information on that. But you don't want to mix the thing and what you're trying to communicate is that you understand that you can't bring in too much information in one dashboard. It just becomes you know, not that easy to understand what it's for. It becomes a little bit unorganized and it's important that a dashboard has a purpose and a focus. So in that case, you know, what you're trying to, what you're trying to show either with your portfolio or an, a potential employee is that you understand the whole process of um, expecting, uh, managing expectations and how important it is that a dashboard has a focus. So if we look at this one, I've mixed some different things. I have sales and I have units sold. And if this, you know, in a perfect world, you could have those together in some way, but I would rather have, if it's an overview, I would rather keep a focus. So I would probably take out some of the units sold so this is the before and if we look at the after you will see that if it's all about sales it's easier to get out different details about sales too so i can add uh, a bar chart which also has something about the product and the segment um the the table here is a lot easier to see you know you can see the months going this way and it's a lot easier to see the numbers instead of sharing both instead of sharing both sales and units sold in the same one it becomes like a lot of information you would have to scroll which we also don't want you to and it's just it, it has a focus it's easier to just um, explore possibilities in that dashboard then when it has a focus i also added uh, countries here which i think is uh, nice and you can see the different sales for the different countries if you want to do that the second concept is dashboards and not reports. And this is one that I've seen quite a lot when I worked on projects. And I see sometimes that people go from old solutions to new solutions, and then they end up doing this. They recreate the reports just the, in, in the dashboards, and you don't want to do that. And which means that if you are applying at a job somewhere, you, you want to be very clear that you understand that dashboards and reports is not the same thing. They don't have the same purpose. And the way we used to work with reports, um, a couple of years ago is not something that you're just to, to recreate we have the power of power of visualization and we have a lot more flexibility we want to make the most out of that so it's important the second concept is you're creating dashboards you're not creating reports so here you can see we have a we have a view in power bi but it is really just a bunch of different tables and it is a report per se if we look at the after you can see that it's the same information um, but I've used colors, I've used visualizations, and it's it's literally, I've literally taken these tables, the different tables, and I have turned them into, um, into uh, sorry, I've taken these graphs, and I've turned them into table objects, and just aligned them here. So it's the exact same information, two very different ways. And what are you communicating to a potential employer? You are communicating that I, I understand the value of visualization and that I will be someone who can if someone comes to me and says I want this report recreated that way your job is to say I hear what you're saying but can we do something more like this can we use visualizations can we use colors can we use the power of what you find in these softwares to, to make it different and to convey information in a much more efficient way if we go to the third concept I have written uh, stick to the basics and the reason I do that is with these uh, softwares, there comes a lot of possibilities to do a lot of different things. You can use a lot of colors, you can use fancy ribbon graphs, you can use uh, a bunch of things. You can have tables with indicators, and, I, I, and I've taken it over the top here. But the concept is very true, and I, I, I've seen this in a lot of projects. You get way too creative, and you use a lot of different objects that don't really convey the purpose and the information. And remember, a dashboard is not created to look pretty. A dashboard is not created to have a lot of fanciness. It is created for business with a specific business case and a purpose. And that is your job to make sure that that is what the end users get. 
They don't get some fancy schmancy uh, whatever someone thinks looks cool just because it looks cool. It has to have a purpose. So all of this is uh, way too much in my opinion. Some of these objects probably don't communicate what they should. And of course I've gone over the top here, but let's look at this is the before and this is the after. And what I've done here, I've stripped it for the colors and I've stuck to the most used visualizations, which is usually a line chart, you have the bar charts and you have tables. And there are some other graphs, I'm not saying these are the only ones you can use, but these are the basics that you should be using most of the time because they are the ones that are the easiest to understand and they are the most clear cut that convey, convey exactly what they're supposed to according to the purpose, which here is, this, if you want to show sales over time, then you should use a line graph. If you want to compare different, um, different categories, then you use a bar chart. If you have a lot of information, then you use a table. And of course you can use some, uh, some colors, which I will come to on the next one, um, uh, which gives it more purpose and, and shows more of, of the information in the graphs. But this whole thing, and I, and I, it might seem over the top, but I have seen some uh, way worse than this. And just a lot of blinking stuff and text tickers going across. And it's just so much going on, going on and you're like, you're like, I cannot pick up on the purpose or the focus of this dashboard, which is extremely important. So stick to the basics. Um, colors, um, so I, I've, uh, I've created a dashboard here. I've stripped it of all the colors. That is because it's also very easy to just pick colors without thinking about that colors have a purpose. Indicators have a purpose. You can convey a lot on a dashboard by using the right colors. Um, so here you can see there are no colors, very bland. Um, dashboard still we have the right objects everything is aligned you can still get a lot of this uh, out of this dashboard in terms of information but we, we want to look at it where, where I've added some colors that has a specific purpose so here you can see it's the exact same dashboard but I've added colors and what are the things that I've done I have uh, decided to uh, color the different uh, totals here uh, with a specific color and then I use the same colors for those countries in the line graphs. So it's easy to understand um, how some of those colors can stick together. So if I click on United States, it's red. The line will be red. They are connected somehow. So that's one way. You can show how different um, dimensional values, how different categorizations belong together in different graphs. Um, on this one, I've, I've decided to um, do it from gray to green. So the greener the, the bars become, the, the higher the amount. So you can also use it to indicate a sort of a difference in, in the amount. And this should actually be sorted the other way because you don't read from right to left, at least not in, uh, not in our part, part of the world. But you read from the left to right, so it should be sorted from the left to right. So I fixed that now. But you can see here we can indicate with colors. We can easily see um, which one is the highest one. And if we didn't, um, if everything wasn't sorted according to the value, uh, incrementally let's say that I sorted it alphabetically then you will see that if we sort by the product name now if you imagine that this was a long row of different values and I, if I um, let's do this really quick so that you can see it a little bit better um, if we go to data colors and then instead of putting gray I can put let's put red just to exemplify um, you can see that this one will still stand out, but if you had a long list of different values, which are bigger spread, it will be easier to identify who was high and low if it isn't sorted according to the value from the, uh, from the bottom and incrementally higher. So you can use colors in that way too, to indicate differences in values. And that is what we are doing at the bottom. Um, at the bottom, I've, I've got the exact same table as before, but if you look at the previous table, it is very hard to see which one is the highest value for which month and which segment. But when you add some colors to it, when you make it into a heat map, you can see right away this month, government 10th, that was the highest month. And then you can see the white ones are a little bit lower. Um, and this is a way you can use colors with a purpose to communicate something to help the business understand the numbers better. Another fairly simple concept to integrate, another fairly simple concept to explain to someone else. Another thing that I have is that consistency is key. And that is consistency in layout, it's consistency in how you use colors, it's consistency in fonts. There's a lot of different ways you can be consistent. 
And uh, what I mean by that is if we duplicate this, uh, if we duplicate this view, and let's say that I put, uh, uh, you know, let's say that we drag, you know, the, the filters to the right side instead of on the left side. And uh, let's say that we, uh, we don't align things as good as we did before. So we can have, you know, a little bit over here and then I'll have this one. And I'm doing this a little bit over the top now, but I'm just, I'm just trying to exemplify this because people don't usually put stuff on top of it, each other, but they're also not all, always very consistent with, with the layouts. Um, so, so if you were on this page and you're looking at this, everything is beautiful, everything is aligned, you, you select a country and everything happens as it's supposed to. Let's imagine that you go to a, the next page in your dashboard and then things move around a little bit. You know, you're gonna ask you, the eye has to search and look for things because what happens is if you are consistent, you are indirectly training the user on how to use it and how the layout should be in the report. And if you are consistent from page to page, it becomes a lot more user friendly to use. Another very simple concept to explain and very simple concept to integrate into your data and, and into your data analytics portfolio. So there you have five easy to explain dashboard concepts that you can implement into your data analytics portfolio. Let me know in the comments which one you like the most. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos on data and analytics, then subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next week.